the mayor on the half. Okay. All right, it says recording in progress. Uh, can you everybody hear me? Am I okay? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, on behalf of the mayor and council, I, I thank all of those who have chosen uh, to attend this special town hall meeting. You know, I want to start by saying to my fellow Vernon Knights that while this COVID-19 crisis is not yet fully over, uh, Vernon Township is emerging from this deadly and disastrous physical, mental, emotional, and economic COVID-19, what I'll call a rainstorm, to an ever brightening rainbow that actually holds the great potential for a bright future for our town, and especially for the development of our town center. You know, but the history of our nation, along with many of our own personal histories, tell us that this potentially bright future is not guaranteed. It tells us that it will not automatically happen. The achievement of this potentially bright future that's available to our special towns needs some positive efforts on our part. And one of my key objectives as mayor is to do everything that I can to move Vernon forward towards becoming an even more desirable town where individuals want to live and raise their families and where businesses want to locate, prosper, want to provide our residents with services and conveniences that they want and need uh, and to help our homeowners to pay the tax bill for a cost-effective and efficient municipal government. My approach to accomplishing this important objective is influenced greatly by one of my national heroes, the great American president, Abraham Lincoln. Mr. Lincoln said this, the best way to predict your future is to create it. Mr. Lincoln uttered these profound words because he also knew that a bright future is not guaranteed. He also knew that a bright future does not automatically happen. And he also knew that any bright future that we desire needs some positive efforts and actions on our part. The plan that we will share with you tonight reflects the kind of positive efforts and actions on the part of the mayor and council that's needed to enhance the opportunity for our town center to achieve its economic potential. This plan will for sure present additional opportunities for families and individuals to enjoy this outstanding place that we love and that we call home. However, the primary purpose of the walking and biking trail and pump track complex is to serve as a positive magnet to attract potential consumers to our town center area. And studies tell us that where there is an increase in consumers, there will soon be an increase in business development to supply those consumers with goods, with services, and the conveniences that they all need and desire. The mayor and council's president presentation to you tonight will consist of three parts. Part one will consist of a review by the municipal engineer Corey Stoner of the overall municipal walking and biking trail pump track complex that the mayor and council have planned. Part two will consist of a review by the municipal planner, Ms. Jessica Caldwell, of a town center visual rendering of what our town center could possibly look like if the municipal walking and biking trail pump track complex proves to be the type of positive consumer magnet and economic development driver that these types of amenities have proven to be in other places throughout our nation. And finally, part three will consist of a review by council member Andy Pisker of the economic benefits, the construction costs, the maintenance costs, and the insurance costs related to this project. After we have presented these aspects of the mayor and council's presentation of the mayor and council's plan, we will welcome comments from any individual who desires to comment or give us their feedback on the plan. As part of our effort to hear comments and feedback from as many individuals as possible, <laughs> consistent with the open public speaking practices of most New Jersey municipalities, we ask for one comment per individual, and we ask that each individual limit their comment to a maximum of three long minutes. 
and to ensure equality and fairness, I have asked our municipal clerk, Ms. Marcy Giannatesio, to start the timer when each individual starts to speak. And so with that introduction, I'll ask our Corey Stoner to please start us out. Corey. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we'll start, um, Marcy, I'm gonna need to be able to share my screen. Yeah, and I, I made it so everybody should be shareable. Okay, great. Okay, um, yes, uh, like the mayor stated, I'm gonna give a review of the, um, the overall uh, the town center uh, biking walking trail, just uh, the overall uh, conceptual plan and then go a little bit more deeper into the bicycle pump track where we stand with that project, uh, some scheduling and some costs, um, but, um, but yeah. So, so the first thing I'll do is I'd like to share, um, on one second, I'll share my screen. Okay, can everybody see this? I can see it. I can see it, and I'm assuming that the public can also, hopefully. Okay, all right, good. All right, this plan, um, as it's marked down at the bottom right-hand corner, it's the Vernon Township Town Center Trail System Overall Concept Plan. I marked uh, yeah, my name um, on the bottom title block uh, preliminary uh, marked at this point. Kind of shows an overview of the, uh, the town center area and uh, some of the various components of this uh, bike and uh, walking trail. Um, just to reference everyone, um, you know, me, if you can see where my cursor is, the hand, I come across the middle of the plan sheet, that's Route 94. Um, and then you have church, and then, and then following over to, toward the right side of the sheet is Church Street. And then down in this right hand side of the uh, plan sheet is the uh, Township Municipal Building. Um, this you know, this concept plan, if I, I'll start at the municipal building, we proposed the town center bike and walking trail, which we've been um, uh, trying to get off the ground for, you know, for a little while now, uh, which would start behind the municipal building. And uh, the way it's shown right now, we have uh, starting behind the municipal building, going through an area which I have marked as a uh, amphitheater. There's been talk of uh, uh, concepts of uh, and discussions about uh, amphitheater, and uh, this seems to be the, uh, a very good location due to the hill and the terrain and the location of the, by the municipal building. But we start, start the trail, it starts as a municipal parking lot. It comes out of the back, uh, uh, on the top of the hill above the, um, the uh, uh, Vernon uh, PAL. And then um, we originally planned to take the bike trail through the sewer easement uh, down toward the uh, uh, town center sewer pump station. Um, this uh, due to the elevation change, and um, um, it became uh, quite evident that a, a nicer route would be to try to bring it through the Baldwin property, which has been a uh, uh, which uh, came to light as a potential open space uh, acquisition for the town. So this concept plan shows a trail, our town center walking trail, going through the Baldwin property over to uh, Black Creek Drive. Um, this plan also shows for the Baldwin property how it could be you know, potentially utilized in the future for additional walking trails, a, um, a parking area, a parking lot, and an, actually an access drive, which would provide another access point um, for to the Baldwin track as well as the, uh, the Vernon Township um, uh, pump track area and bring it in off of a mega drive. Um, by Black Creek Drive, we have an area, the, the main focal point I want to bring everybody's attention to is this Vernon Township pump track. And if you went a little bit, um, this area here is where we're proposing, we're working on the request for proposals right now. Um, we're proposing, uh, this is a township owned property um, that has the area where the DPW garage uh, currently stores some of its uh, materials uh, for construction. Um, but in the upper pad area is, a, was a, is for the most part, a, an open field which overlooks the valley. Um, and, and it overlooks, it goes over top of the solar panels, but it also um, uh, overlooks the valley going, uh, going toward the west. It's a beautiful views. We decided to place the Vernon Township uh, pump track up in this area, which the pump track would be accessed um, you know, uh, right now by, by Black Creek Drive with a parking area, a pump track, um, and, uh, and, and we had amenities, uh, another amenity, an ADA uh, trail to go around the pump track uh, to provide uh, some more amenities at that, uh, that location. 
So um, the town center trail ties directly right into the pump, uh, pump track area. Um, off to the uh, west, we also show another future Vernon, um, uh, Vernon Valley biking and walking trail. Uh, the mayor and I uh, have uh, talked about this in the past. And I've come up with some, some ideas maybe in the future which would bring this trail system, which you know, we're, we're right now we're focusing um, in the town center area. But in the future, this trail could be much broader with to go down to Mountain Creek. And it could uh, continue through the valley uh, the whole way down into McAfee and really provide a, a, a enormous, uh, um, uh, a, a enormous trail benefit for the town, just not just in the town center, but uh, for the you know, future area, uh, larger areas uh, as a whole. So right now that this project, you know, the project we're looking at right now is the Vernon Pump Track, the, the town center walking trail back to the municipal building complex, and then everything that could possibly happen with the Baldwin um, open space parcel if that comes to be. Um, the uh, uh, second plan I'm going to show you is a little blow up of the, the pump track itself. Okay. This, this track, uh, what we're proposing right now is a, uh, is a uh, pump track facility, which there's a couple in the area. Um, the most, uh, most everybody knows the, uh, uh, the one up in Port Jervis is the most, uh, most popular one people like to talk to, um, which would be an asphalt based um, uh, trail uh, pump track. You can have uh, your pump track can be consistent, constructed with an asphalt base or, uh, or an earth base. Um, the problem with an earth base, which is you know, just uh, basically dirt uh, that's sculpted in for uh, the trails, is that over time it takes a lot of maintenance. Um, it uh, it uh, can be utilized only certain times of the year, rainy times of the year, that can't be utilized. Um, yeah, it can become safety uh, issues as well if it's not maintained. So we're proposing a trail system, um, uh, a pump track system that's going to be a, a paved surface. And, um, and I believe, and we believe this, this will be a benefit for the town, not just for now, but for many years to come. It's going to be a nice, we, we believe that a pump track, you're going to put money into a pump track facility. It's got to be a very nice locate, uh, place for people who want to come and visit and spend time in. Uh, so it has to look nice and it's got to function nicely. Um, the, uh, the, the, the track itself right now, we, we've come up with a conceptual plan. Uh, we're preparing our request for proposals. Um, what we found is that uh, uh, what we decided to do with this is we're going to do um, prepare a request for proposals um, and request a, a interested contractors that are to do almost like a design build. Uh, I want them because what we have shown here um, is a concept, but the most uh, builders, yeah, this is like an art. Uh, I would say that building a pump track is like an it's like an art form, and the, and we're going to request that you know. Uh, proposals for contractors to be able to design, finish the design and build it within a budget that we, we establish. Um, and we're going to request proposals for that. And we should have that probably within, you know, within the next month. And I'll go over the schedule a little bit. Um, just for some feels of what this pump track could look, what could look like. Um, I have some photos of some other sample um, pump tracks. Um, this uh, this was provided by one of one vendor that probably uh, will probably uh, most likely give us a proposal on the project, but um, they had some nice photos uh, from the, some other facilities, and um, and this one this one here this was these both photos kind of show an asphalt uh, pump track which shows you, you know, the bumps and the turns and the curves and it just is a very unique little design, um, but it's only it's a paved system. And uh, the photos I have, these photos are from the the, uh, the, the track in the, in Port Jervis, which shows a, also asphalt design pattern. Um, this is the, all these kids and, and, and riders are sitting on top of the hill, getting ready to ready to go into the uh, uh, pump track itself. Um, also, we have a, a little bit. We really like this idea that we have a small beginners trail uh, for younger kids as well. Um, when I when I show the concept, what we believe what we would do, we we have the trail system uh, for the, the major track. We'd have a pump track, uh, like a beginner uh, 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 little track, and then we also have some sitting areas and and some trails, and 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 a um, and a parking lot that's uh, constructed at least initial construct uh, a lot of at least thirty spaces to get get everything moving. Uh, so I think, you know, that is the, uh, in general, that that is what we're proposing to do. 
uh, for, the, for the pump track itself. Um, when I stated before, uh, we've been looking at this conceptually, you know, for not just the pump track, not just for the bicycle uh, you know, trail, the uh, bicycle walking trail coming the missile building. Um, we were looking, trying to look at this whole area, you know, starting from the municipal building, the walking trail down to the Baldwin property to the uh, uh, pump track, the parking lot, some improvements to Mountain Creek, uh, Black Creek Drive. And we've kind of came up with a, uh, an estimated, estimated of cost. And uh, I'd like to show you my estimates here. Basically, these are the estimated costs that we have um, established for these uh, different amenities. Um, we got the town center bike and walking trail, um, estimated 195,000. The bicycle pump track construction, 170,000. These are total costs. We're trying to include all the engineering and, and uh, construction and permit, um, you know, soil, soil conservation permits and things of that nature in here. Um, the parking lot construction, 60,000. Multi-purpose trail, 50,000. Black Creek Drive improvements, 225. Um, this is uh, what we're proposing in Black Creek Drive. It'd be, a little, it'd be more than just a resurfacing. Uh, if you go down the roadway today, it's in bad shape. Uh, it needs to be paved. It's in rough, uh, rough condition. Um, but we believe coming out on 94 will require some additional improvements, um, which would raise the roadway up at the intersection, provide better sight distance, safer access. So we have some, um, we, we established a, um, an estimate of some, some of the costs that could be incurred with that. And we set that at two hundred twenty-five thousand um, dollars. And then we have the alternate access coming out of Mega Drive, which a Mega Drive access, if the town center takes off, you have more development of Mega Drive, Data Drive. Um, it also this will provide another access into this park, and um, and uh, this this was listed at two hundred thousand dollars as well. So all the items I kind of I showed on the other plan were estimated at. Um, the total is up about uh, just under a million dollars at nine hundred thousand um, dollars. The schedule for schedule, um, the town center bike and walking trail works a little bit on hold right now, uh, waiting for the Baldwin property to go through its uh, uh, various um, uh, environmental studies that have to be uh, performed before they can you know complete the purchase. Um, and then the, I put a pump track design construction schedule. What we're thinking about for the pump track is um, we're going to be next week, we're going to be uh, requesting the proposals. We, we anticipate getting the proposals back um, at the end of the first week in July, looking for an award the middle of July. So if, you're, if the council is meeting in, in July 12th, we're hopeful that we'll have um, uh, good, good proposals um, and be able to settle on a contractor um, that we believe can be the best um, design build firm for the, for the town. Um, at that point, they'll, they'll go through a, a design process to try to tie down that design a little bit more. Um, from the, the uh, contractors we've spoken to, um, uh, you know, they, they it's, uh, like I said, stated before, there's a little bit of an art, 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 but they will put a design together to make sure the town is happy with where they're going with this design. And then, um, and then it'll go directly into a construction project later on. Um, we believe that we can have the construction started beginning in September. Um, it'll take likely about two months to complete. So by mid-November, we're hopeful that the, we can have the substantially complete. Uh, I anticipate some of the board areas might not be fully completed, um, but the uh, you know the, some touch-up work. But I think we'll be substantially completed by the middle of November. And then the then they do some cleanup in the spring. Uh, but but if the weather the weather permits, they'll, they'll get everything done probably before the end of the year. Um, but uh, so that that's uh, in in a nutshell, uh, that's that's where we are with uh, the pump track and some estimates for the overall um, town center projects that I had shown on one of the, on the earlier concept plan. And uh, I think that's uh, uh, that's a quick review. And then if you have questions, uh, I can answer this question. Thank you, uh, thank you, Corey. Uh, we'll we'll have comments uh, near the end, uh, so that the, the public can see the entire presentation. But at this point, I'd just like to know if any of the council people who are present uh, would want to make any other comments on this, because this whole presentation, as we've given uh, today, has it's, this is a mayor council thing. We've shared this with them. Uh, Corey, you've done an excellent job. If anyone else or uh, uh, any, any council person would like to make any comments, 
are about this fine. If not, we can hold those. I'm okay. Tony, you said you're okay? Yep, I said I'm good. Okay. I, I, I'll hold. Okay, all right. Uh, I, I can't see the other council members, but I hear no voices. So I'm assuming, yeah, there every, every we go. So I'm assuming everything is okay. Uh, I have no comment right now either. Thank you. Okay. John, what about you? I'm good. I'm okay. And Andrew? Okay. Uh, Council President Shortway couldn't make it. Uh, he couldn't arrange his personal work schedule, but, uh, but we've got most of the council here, and that's fine. And he's seen this presentation a couple of times. Okay, with that, let's go into part two. Uh, Jessica, uh, who is our planner, did um, a very good visual rendition of what our town could possibly look like uh, if, in fact, uh, this bicycle pump track and, and trail served to be the kind of magnet for Vernon Township that these kinds of amenities have been all over the nation. Uh, so, Jessica, will you want to share your screen and go through a review of the uh, uh, photos yeah, of the drawings, I guess. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Um, members of the council, it's nice to be here. I was asked with my firm to uh, work with the township to develop some rendering, some ideas uh, to tie the municipal walking biking trail complex into the overall town center to show how they connected to the town center and also just to inspire ideas of what our town center could become. And we wanted to share this vision that I think the township has and tie it into these current proposals as well as what could uh, happen potentially in the future uh, as part of this development. So this is the beginning of, of this um, project. This is all, these are all of the um, items that are in this proposal. Just to remind everybody, these are just renderings, conceptual designs. Obviously anything that's, that would be built in the future has to be engineered and adhere to all uh, local county and state regulations. These are big concept, um, big picture ideas. So this is an overview of the area. The town center is really large. So uh, I think sometimes visually and mentally, it's hard to tie all these different projects together. So we worked really hard to show how various projects would interact and how potential development in the future would tie into these projects. So this red line is the town center boundary and this um, sort of key map flows throughout the document so that you can tell where you are within the center. We looked at things like complete streets, so streets that serve pedestrians, bikes, and cars. Uh, we tied in the Vernon Township um, bike and walking trail that, that Corey presented to us. Uh, we looked at a potential um, Route 94 shopping center in a location where there's some properties currently for sale that are vacant. Uh, we looked at what the Route 94 and Black Creek Drive intersection might look like once the improvements that uh, Corey was presenting uh, would occur. We uh, looked at how the pump track might look once it's built uh, along with the town center trail extension. And then we tied it in with the Baldwin property and how that might look with the town center, including also a, a potential access drive that's been discussed from Church Street that would go down on Black, Black Creek Drive and connect sort of the municipal town center area uh, with, with these two projects that are proposed. We also looked at an amphitheater and what that might look like uh, at the beginning of the town center trail behind the municipal complex. And we looked at the uh, County Route 515 and Route 94 intersection. to show sort of a gateway feature, uh, some potential complete street um, features that, that could potentially um, be put into that area. Uh, we also looked at the town center on uh, Vernon Road, Route 515, and just to show some mixed use potential development near the fire department and the pond and, and some park and open space amenities. And we also looked at another potential mixed use development on Church Street, uh, also with a park and open space amenity that could tie into 
uh, the Vernon Township biking and walking trail. So we're gonna show you some visual renderings of, of what these various projects could look like. So the first one is a Route 94 shopping center, which again is, um, I guess, a little bit south of where Black Creek Drive is. So you could potentially have some mixed use buildings uh, with, with parking adjacent. And as you see, the, the pump track would be north of that. I think as coming in on Route 94 is a gateway, it could spur development where people would want to uh, come and, and purchase goods and services and have a place to relax um, and enjoy lunch or something like that in connection with the, the pump track. The next slide uh, shows Black Creek Drive at its intersection with Route 94. Uh, and what those improvements could look like. We envisioned a potentially a, a shared street where you have um, biking uh, shown as a shared option on, on within the, um, the paved way, a highlighted crosswalk intersection, as well as a potential um, bikeway shoulder noted on Route 94, which could connect to the shopping center that we just showed. So going down Black Creek, that's where the pump trap would be. It also shows us the potential improvements to the street, which is in, in quite poor condition, which is why the township is looking at improving uh, that street as part of this project. So the pump track itself, as, as Corey was showing us, um, would have you know, this sort of undulating bike trail. There could potentially be places for people to sit and watch. We incorporated in the um, circular uh, walking path, uh, which we, which Corey discussed would be potentially an ADA accessible walking path, um, which those are really hard to come by. So that would be a great amenity as well. Uh, tied into a potential kiosk for you know food and beverages and snacks, and a picnic area, a parking area, all tied in uh, with Black Creek Drive. So that's the potential um, pump track. There's some other views tied in with the, the Vernon uh, walking trail, you know, where people could walk and, and jog to the location. Um, and just for reference, this is, this is the Black Creek Road looking up that way. Um, I guess that would be east of Black Creek Drive. Uh, you can see what it looks like today, as well as uh, the, the location of the pump trap. And here's another close up view of what it could potentially look like. Uh, tying in the trail, as you can see the walking biking trail, uh, you could have uh, gateway signs, um, places for people to you know, push strollers and, and just enjoy themselves during the, during the day. Uh, here's another rendering. We thought, you know, Corey mentioned what a great view it is uh, looking out from this area. So we wanted to incorporate that into the vision uh, because it's really a nice location just to interact with the Black Creek Valley, which I think you don't get a lot of great views of the valley um, at, from any locations currently, I think within some of the municipal areas in the town center. So this would be a really great asset to the community to have this nice open space area with this uh, wonderful view of the valley. This is the Baldwin open space property and the potential connection of the trail there. So we tie it in as a Vernon uh, Township bike, bike and walking trail. You could also make a loop trail on, on this property, uh, which would just expand the potential recreation and walking, biking opportunities adjacent to the pump track, as well as we show the connection from Omega Drive, uh, potential access road that would connect to Black Creek Drive and just provide better accessibility to the area, which is a little bit limited right now. So that's one other idea. We also um, looked at a potential amphitheater behind, this is the municipal complex. So this would be the beginning of the bi bike and walking trail. And this would be, we think a great location for some kind of outdoor venue. Um, not necessarily that it would look like this, but it would be something along these lines. I mean, you already have a parking area, you have municipal facilities. It would just be a great spot where people could come and, you know, hear concerts or see plays. Uh, just a really nice, 
specific area that I know has been, this type of facility has been talked about for quite some time. So I think this would be a nice tie-in and potential uh, project for this area in the future. Also near the municipal building on Church Street, there are some vacant properties on Omega and Zeta Drive that could potentially be developed for a mixed-use project. Uh, we showed a mixed-use building as well as a potential open space or small park adjacent to the building. So here's a structure that would be along Church Street, similar to some of the existing structures that are near the municipal building currently um, with a nice open space park uh, next door. We also show uh, County Route 94 and 515 Vernon Road. And just as a potential gateway, uh, what could be done, you know, working in the future to create complete streets, um, beautify the area, do some placemaking, you know, maybe a welcome sign, uh, just identifying the town center, letting people know where they are, or what they're coming into, a different place. Uh, and as you can see with the streets, is streetscaping, sidewalk, uh, potential bike paths along uh, the various roadways, as well as a high visibility crosswalks for pedestrians. So all of these ideas, just incorporating a more pedestrian friendly and bike friendly options within the town center that we hope could link back to uh, the walking and biking trail so that if someone wanted to you know, bike their way up into the town center, then they could come out and, and go around the town center and visit some of the um, restaurants or uh, services that exist that would exist in the center. Then there are more ideas about how complete streets would work. You know, that they prioritize everyone, bicycles, pedestrians, drivers, also helps to slow traffic uh, to have these interactions. So here's another view of what a potential uh, gateway feature could look like, some pedestrian benches, um, these high vi visibility crosswalks. And then also incorporating the complete streets idea into Black Creek Drive and uh, having the shared shared bikeway along Black Creek Drive, again, to bring people up and trying to connect them with, with the shops and then, um, potential restaurants and uses within the town center. Here is uh, in the center of town along Main Street and Vernon Road, Route 515, a potential mixed use uh, building, uh, shops, and an open space area near the fire department here. Uh, so we have this mixed use structure, some parking, you have the pond, and incorporating a, a walking path around this area that would connect to Main Street. So just a nice uh, mix of open space utilizing the existing pond and creating uh, a mixed use residential and uh, retail feature. And across the street, we have an, another um, building that could be like a mixed use shopping center. And here are some renderings of, of what those could look like and those structures, wide sidewalks and, and just various uh, retail or restaurant uses for people to visit. It's another rendering of the um, mixed use shops across the street, potential open space, even like open um, outdoor dining options. And this is an idea of what it might look like if you had development on both sides of Route 515 going back toward uh, the municipal building where the, the, the township uh, walking biking trail is. And some other views of the pond and a potential walking trail within the center of town and how these could interact with um, pedestrian facilities or connecting areas in the town center. And that concludes my presentation of the potential renderings of the Vernon Town Center. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, you did an excellent job. And, uh, you know, looking at that in terms of what our town could possibly look like uh, is more exciting every time that I see it. And I, I hope that, that what the public sees is that we have not simply been sitting here just thinking about a pump track or just thinking about a trail. We've been thinking about our town center and how we could make it develop. 
Uh, and in our minds, everything that we're working towards is to try to make that a reality in everything that we really do. And I think that there's nothing that's much more effective than a visual rendering. And thank you so very much for that. We'll move on to part three. Uh, Councilman Pisker uh, has a very good presentation that he's prepared that really puts some numbers and some other things uh, uh, related to this whole complex, this, this, this whole process, because, uh, uh, you know, we've done a lot of studies. He's done a lot of work in terms of what has happened at other places, what we've really seen, what are some of the costs, done a lot of thought to this. So, Andy, would you please give us your presentation? I will do so. And I just wanted to say that this study was done with uh, in support with both the finance department, a lot of input from town council people, but especially from Danelle Bright, who's helped me with a lot of the figures. So I want to give uh, credit where credit is due as well. Let's see if we can do this and share my screen. Um, I'm going to need to have somebody walk me through and make sure I show the full presentation and not the notes pages. So just give me one second here. Uh, You should see the whole page. It says uh, Vernon Town Center Trail and Pump Track. Is that correct? We don't see it yet, Andy. Andy. Right. Let's see here. All the technical stuff worked well up until this point. There's got to be one glitch, so that's okay. That's all right. Just hang on a second. There we go. What All do right. you, uh, so what do you see now? We, we can we see, see your notes though. Okay, hang on one second. Still seeing the notes pages as well, correct? Yes. See your yes. notes, yeah. All right. I run two screens, so the problem is, is that sometimes this does happen. And I just will see if I can change this one way and change the view. Better now. I apologize. What do you see now? Your notes have disappeared. The notes are gone. Okay, very good. All right, well, let's get started with what we have. You probably can see the left-hand side with all the, the preceding slides as well. You might want to put it in, do you have it in slideshow mode, Andy? Do I have it in what? Slideshow mode or should be like a little uh, option on the bottom to switch it, switch it to slideshow or presentation mode. And then those slides will be on the left. Let me see here. So if you go over more to the, yeah, it should be more to the right. And it's just one of those little buttons. It should be this one here. So. And I, have I wonder if slide, he goes up. I've had the slideshow open, but it is not going to that one. Just hang on. Oh, Andy, I wonder, if, I wonder if you go up to the top where it says slideshow, and then you click on uh, from the beginning. I think that that would work. That'll work too, yeah. All right, I see what we need to do here. Okay. This should be this one. Close that one out. I apologize for that. It's okay. I think all of us in America, if not the world, have gotten used to these kind of glitches and these kind of things happening. So it's part of the COVID related world we live in. Yep. Now I just need to get back to your pre this part of the presentation. And I need to share that screen again. There we go. I think that okay. will bring it up. Yeah. Well, okay, Andy, we've got the full, the full Perfect. screen. Yeah. Perfect. All righty. We have to switch screens around to make that work. Very good. Thank you for your patience. Now, again, as uh, people have mentioned, I'm Andrew Pitzker. Uh, I sit on the town council now for the last year. And it's an honor to be able to present this for you and bring this presentation 
and the facts and figures. Um, I'm going to walk you through why we do this, what's the vision, the economics, and share with you some of the conservative revenue calculations on some sources of how this material was developed. Also, keep in mind that this presentation, along with an FAQ file that we've been putting together from all the questions we have gotten, will be available. And I will assume that Jessica and Corey's presentations will also be available, and we'll post those on the town website later, uh, either this week or next. So, why do this? And I just want to check, we do have the second slide up? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, why do this? From a family perspective, this is a way to bring families together, a gathering place for social interaction, and a place where you can enjoy the view of the vista of the valley. Also, this is a start in developing a connection by connecting people and town together. This is an opportunity to develop town center and as studies have shown, a park and a central part of town is vital. This is a plan, a plan to develop business opportunities as well. Realistically, if we don't invest in our town, who will? I recall in many meetings that I've sat in a town council, people mentioning we need rateables. We need to grow a business and most importantly, provide for the well-being and safety of our population in Vernon Township. This is why we do this. This is about connecting people for local businesses. All these businesses are here today. How many can you connect to town center? How many more can we attract? This is one solution. Others will come if we do something. But it's been many years since we have done anything to develop town center. So what is the vision? The vision is basically to create a healthy and vibrant community new passive and active recreation activities and become an economic driver for vacant parcels for development. There are many well-documented studies and research, but I will be sharing these in links in this presentation. Keep in mind, we have much more to do behind the scenes as we work through this plan. We still need to develop a marketing strategy. Working with our Economic Development Advisory Committee, it's obvious we need to market Vernon Township more effectively in the future. Most of us know we need to attract, retain new businesses so we can grow, prosper, and increase our rateables. So what are the considerations we'll look at today? Obviously, we're gonna look at the economic benefits. We've talked a little bit about the master plan with Jessica. Community activities and events were considered. The construction cost, the maintenance cost, and the insurance cost. As I mentioned before, we have a FAQ file that will capture many of these questions that you've asked in the last days, months, and year. This will be available for your review. We need to answer the tough questions so that we can all invest, be benefit from the investment we were responsible for. But understanding we're doing this for the benefit of economic growth and to secure government, and hopefully improve our rateables for the future, because increased rateables will flatten our taxes. As it's been presented by Jesse, uh, Jessica and Corey before, this is the vision. Track, trail, and community coming together for a better and stronger learning. Keep in mind, this is a vision. It's a plan. It's a journey. And yes, it's an investment in our town. One not to take lightly and one that can grow learning in a smart way. So now let's go over some of the economics. And this information comes from a variety of different key areas, but from We Conserve PA, as you'll see the link below, brings up some of them. Some of the key economic benefits you'll see is increased value of adjacent properties. Communities along trails often call trail towns benefit from the influx of visitors going to eateries and other retail establishments. Trails make communities more attractive places to live. There are many people when they relocate, look for places where there are trails for their family to walk and play. And then the economic growth is well documented in many of the studies that I have retrieved as well as other people in the group. Trail systems attract new business and they pro provide new economic opportunities for existing businesses as well. 
As we continue on with economic benefits, it does boost spending at local businesses, as well documented in many of the studies. It revitalizes depressed areas, creating a demand for space in what ones were vacant lands and buildings. It also provides for low or no cost recreation to families with low cost relative to other recreation services that could be provided by government. It also increases tax revenue in communities in which they are located. These benefits represent a huge economic return on the money invested into trail projects. The cost of land acquisition for trails, trail construction, and maintenance are far outweighed by the economic benefits generated by trails. When we look at local businesses and economic benefits that they can achieve, four in 10 trail users that were surveyed planned an overnight stay as part of their trip. Overnight trail users spend an average of $98 a day in the trail communities, and that's not including the accommodations. Non-overnight trail users spend an average of $13 a day in the trail communities, and these are the very conservative rates that were picked up, took the low ones. Um, average income from 60 people per week on a day trip times $13 is about $780 a week for 52 weeks means about $40,000 annually is spent in day trips coming to this area. The average income from six people with overnight stays for two days plus meals is about $98 a day times two days times six people times 52 weeks, which is another $60,000 annually. And this is just additional income over what we have to pay. That information came from uh, Conservation Tools Production uh, file that I picked up from Eagle Bend Trails. Now, if we look at other town revenues projected, if you look at Church Street, Theta, and Omega, there are 14 properties that are vacant today. Town revenue comes in a form of rentals, doesn't it? When a piece of vacant property is developed, it grows in value. Value brings higher assessments, and then this in turn brings more tax income to the town. We also grow tax income in many other ways. But what is most important is that we grow as a town. Very conservatively, the numbers on this chart show uh, what can be achieved. If two properties are sold and developed, and each of these properties on Church Street, they make Omega average about a half an acre to an acre in total. Currently, the average revenue in taxes is about 4,000. It would double simply in that area. Most of them would go more than that. If one property develops every two to three years, revenue increases a minimum of 4,000 per year per property. This is one way to achieve growth in tax variables in business of town center. So the potential tax revenue increase to develop these three streets in 10 years, 14 months, with a modest $4,000 increase would give us $56,000 more in taxes revenue. That's a pretty simple one. When we look at key economic benefits, it's not yet. This is a, this, there is a, a survey that was done where they say that do you believe that a greenway can be an economic driver? This chart you see here appears similar to the one we had when we had the referendum on the open space monies back in 2018. 69% of the people surveyed said they believe it would be an economic driver. 27% said no. Others did not comment. So now let's look at the open space trust fund. The current total open space fund now available are $858,000. Approved via the 2018 referendum for amenities, trails, and bicycle palm track was $291,000. And that is continually funded by 6% of the hotel occupancy tax. The current available for acquisition and farmland preservation is $588,000. That is continued to be funded by 1% of the hotel occupancy tax. If you need some clarification on that, I believe Danelle can help with that because uh, this information came from her. So Danelle, I don't know whether you have any comments right now, but questions may come up. 
Well, I, I do just want to point out, um, so the way this is worded, obviously the referendum approved the $291,000. We've already paid for some of that um, for the planning and design of the trail system and pump track. So I just want to be clear, obviously when you add those two numbers, they are not going to equal 858. That's correct. Thank you very much. All right, so you heard Corey talk a little bit about the estimated cost for project, the project construction. The estimated cost for the trail is 245,000, which includes what we mentioned about the ADA compliance sections at $50,000. And the trail is both biking and walking. The estimated pump, uh, bike pump track is 170,000 for total projected cost for that section of $415,000. Other costs for the project include the road improvements that Corey had mentioned, access to the Omega Drive in Black Creek, through Black Creek, and the 30 spaces at 60,000. So as the road and parking improvements come to 485, between those two, that is $900,000. But the one thing that we also decide, I also decided to include is, and being open and transparent here, is the Baldwin Open Space Acquisition. It's $289,000. So if you want to look at the big picture, the total project cost is 1.189. And this is what, when you look at it and you break it down, we'll come to. So how will we finance it? Well, if you look at it from the capital funds that we have already existing, we will put a down payment of $29,000. And the nice part is, is that the open space funds pay for approximately 51% of this total project. So we already have been putting this money away since 2000 to be able to do something like this to help grow revenue in our town and utilize the open space funds to our maximum benefit that will benefit this town and also maintain open space. The open space funds for the Baldwin property, Vernon's open space funds will be 214,000 and then the Sussex County Open Space Fund grant is approved for 75,000. Whereas what we're doing with this whole project that may be $1.2 million, once you get done with it, we are bonding for road improvements and trails. The total cost for the taxpayers in bonding is $580,000. So you see that we've utilized the open space funds to the maximum ability and we keep and continue to uh, replenish that. Am I correct, Danelle? Yeah, yes. Um, and we're not, I mean, we're not maxing out the amount that's available for acquisition for um, this acquisition in farmland preservation. So we'll still have a significant amount there. And we're not just, you know, maxing out the use of that. We're also continuous, continually replacing money um, annually based on our hotel occupancy tax. And that you would really have in the budget, which we talked about, it's uh, running around. I think we said budgeted for this year is 325,000. I'm sorry, you're asking for an estimate on the hotel occupancy tax? Yes, ma'am. Through the end of the year? I would, I would say that's a conservative number. Okay, very good, thank you. So why finance this? Well, we're financing 49% of it uh, for 10 years. The bicycle pump track and trail has a longer life of about 15 years. And currently the bond rate is low at 3.95 rate, which is the anticipated average. And I'll show you the uh, amortization chart in a minute. If finance, the bicycle pump track and trail system will cost the average household approximately $5.80 a year for the next 10 years, less if the interest rates remain low. So here you can look at the total project, project at 1.189 million. And with the open space funds, we're talking about financing $580,000 of projectable useful life for 15 years. So the yearly band amount, the estimated tax rate when we first start the uh, loan, and the pay down schedule on how it would be done. That comes out to an annual rate of 577 cost per home, or basically 48 cents per month payment for the bicycle pump track. Danelle, thank you for this, uh, this chart. This is very helpful for me as well as understanding the payments. And I guess this middle column right here would be the interest. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, very 
Yeah, and these are all obviously you can see their estimated interest rates. Um, I think the 2021 rate is fairly accurate about where we currently are um, for short term notes, if not less than that. Um, but, you know, I can't really completely predict the future, but I think it, this is fairly, fairly decent interest rate projection. If you could, I actually would have you doing my stock portfolio. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So also, one of the things we have to do is look at potential revenue streams for local business and potential rate of home growth. Mm -hmm. This is something where you look at other towns, you look at what other uh, towns with trails have done, and these numbers come in where tax revenue from new construction and business growth. And the numbers vary from the size of a population of 20,000 people to about 75,000. Uh, the growth rate was anywhere between 18 to 88,000 just in tax revenue for new construction and business growth. Uh, business opportunities and organic growth for existing businesses. Conservatively, we looked at $15,000 a year here in Vernon. And revenue streams can increase between 103 to 173,000 annually from track and trail activities. This also other areas would be the properties sold and developed beyond the conservative estimates. Today we talk about the 14 properties between Church, Theta, and Omega. Uh, across the street from Town Center is a 10 acre lot that also hasn't been developed along with I think another 26 or 27 lots in Town Center that are vacant. Also we will be able to do events at these sites that can be developed and other things that maybe you can consider and draw as ideas that you may be able to execute as this project goes forward. Some of the payback calculations we're not able to establish, uh, they are small in the first year, is income to local existing businesses, tax revenues from short-term rentals, revenues from new businesses, as well as tax revenues and property purchases and improvements, also, some things we have to consider is increase in local employment and increased utilization of our sewer service area. Obviously, this would help bring in more EDUs as well. So why do this? Well, I think it's important that we need to invest in our town center to bring in new business. We have no real activity-based investments in many years. It helps to promote growth by attracting new businesses to buy and build in town center. Many studies support towns thrive when parks and trails are built. It promotes healthy town initiatives. And the revenue growth as businesses grow and build. For example, by building lots sold, built on and operating, we see a conservative tax increase of between twenty and fifty thousand dollars annually. Now let's look at it the other way. What if we do nothing? The tax burden will increase on each household because there are no tax variables to help share the burden. There's no economic growth of the town or the town center. We then rely on hope. And I do say hope. Businesses will do this themselves and will benefit from them. We are not committing to a plan or a solution and we are not promoting growth if we do nothing. Some of the concerns that have come up, and there are many uh, that we've addressed at the FAQs, but some of the key ones were, what about cost for maintenance for the track and trail? It varies. Uh, we found an estimate to be between four to 14,000. So we said on average, it's 10,000 per year, and that's actually paid for through the open space fund. What about insurance impact? Um, none. We're a member of the statewide joint insurance fund in state law. But I know that Chuck, you have been going out and uh, investigating the cost of insurance. Do you have anything you can share with us today? I spoke with our risk manager who is a uh, professional uh, insurance agent and he informed us that this would likely cost us uh, as an addition to our insurance less than $1,000. Okay, thank you very much. And then the other thing that came up is, well, you know, somebody gets hurt, you could get sued here. And chapter 59 provides some tort protection. This provides immunity for townships and governments 
and to these core issues where private insurances would require additional payouts due to liability. And I know Chuck, you and I have talked extensively about this and uh, it is pretty much statewide that this is the way New Jersey works. Am I correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. So the future vision, town center and bicycle pump track is only a small part of the vision as you've seen from uh, Jessica and Corey's presentation. But there is an opportunity for utilization of the New Jersey trail system concept. As you heard Corey mention, we could extend this out to connect with other areas. The Northwest Trail System that connects town center to Appalachian Trail, Warwick and Hardiston. It's also a catalyst to a trail system connection to the western side of New Jersey and PA. And you can find this information uh, on the New Jersey Trails Link 2020. And I'll give you a full list of these at the end of this presentation. These are the additional sources that you can go to, the economic benefits of a trail. We can serve PA, uh, also Land Trust Association in Pennsylvania, American Hiking Association, the impacts of greenways and multi-use trails, and then the New Jersey Trail Plan Update 2020. From what I have read in the New Jersey Trail Plan Update, and others of us have done, is that we are not getting our fair share of this. Obviously, the East Coast gets a lot of it. This is something that we're going to need to work on and be able to achieve some of those grants and plans as well. So the bicycle pump track and the road to growth and develop is never easy. There are many ups and downs, but if we plan, discuss and execute, we can grow learning and increase our growth and bring in new businesses, stabilize taxes in the future, and grow the rateables. People have come forth asking for this. And some of you thought this could be done at no cost. Obviously it's extended beyond the bicycle pump track, but we obviously have costs and commitments that come into play, roads to consider, safety to consider. But as a town, we can come together and invest in the best for our town. Therefore, building something in town center to help us grow and something for us to be proud of. With that, it's up to you, it's up to all of us. This is one solution. A solid one talked about for many years and now is doable. The plan is not complete and yet it still needs more work. I look forward to a civil discussion and work towards this and other solutions to bring Vernon a stronger business platform and flatten the taxes in the future. Thank you for listening to me. Hopefully this will give you more information on which to form your own opinions and get a better understanding of where your town government is trying to achieve. But it does take all of us working together and I value all of your thoughts and opinions, but it takes solutions, ideas, and hard work to make all this anything to happen. So I do urge you, if you have an idea or a solution, I look forward to a meaningful dialogue as well as the rest of my council members and the administration. If you disagree with the plan, I look forward to your ideas and solutions on how we can make town center better. But if we're going to do anything, we must all be part of the solution. For me, I believe it's time to invest in Vernon's growth and benefit all the people in this town now and into the future. Thank you, that concludes my part of the presentation. Back to you, Howard. Uh, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, uh, I clicked on something and, <laughs> and uh, I can't get the screen back. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, view. Here we go. All right. Uh, hello, well, what did I do? I can hear you, Howard. Excuse me, guys. We can okay. Hear you. Oh, all right. Um, well, thank you very, very much, Andy. I, and, you know, I hope that what the public uh, sees is that we put a lot of thought and effort into this. Uh, we've been working on this for a while, uh, and we wanted to wait until we had uh, our ducks in a row, for lack of a better word, that we had a complete picture that we can reveal to the public. So this is the plan that we plan 
to move forward on. And this is why we plan to move forward on this. And this is why we really see this not just a, a, another recreational adventure, but really a, a catalyst uh, to uh, start the development of our town center. Uh, you know, a town center plan is just like, like a wish list. That's what it is. It's, it's, it's what really towns hope will develop. Well, after 10, 15, 20, 30 years, nothing develops. You need to kind of take a look at some things. And they ask a question of when is the uh, last time we developed, we, uh, um, we invested in our towns. It's been a very, very long time. And that's what we're trying to do now. So with that, uh, I'll, I'll, we will accept uh, comments on the plan. And uh, as I said, uh, I'd like to ensure that we get uh, as many comments or as much feedback as possible. So um, we're going to ask each individual please to make one comment. We're going to give you three long minutes, and believe me, three minutes is a long time to make to make your comment. And as each individual raises their hands, uh, uh, Marcy, and you recognize them, would you please start the timer? Yes. So let's go on to that now, please. Yes. I have um, Andre. Hello. Hi, are you hearing me? Yes. Oh, okay. And I don't see my image, so I don't know if I'm on camera or not. Anyway, it's dark here. Um, the plan looks super. Um, I'm wondering, is there a way to guarantee that the revenues that come in, that hopefully come in each year, and hopefully build each year, that that it comes back to the property tax payers that goes into a certain fund that helps reduce, you know, the property taxes of, of you know, even a small percentage each year with the, with the revenues that are brought in from this because, you know, sometimes what happens is these things get going, but they never get back to the, the residents, you know, in, in forms of, property tax reduction, which is what I would like to see as well as, you know, the great community bonding effort and such. So it's kind of long winded, but do you understand <laughs> yeah. that, that there were, that there would be an exact formula, you know, like guaranteed to the residents. I most certainly understand your question. Um, I, I most certainly can, guarantee that will be the case with me as mayor and this current council as it's intact. That is, we will use this in the very, very big interest of taxpayer. The whole idea is to try to reduce the tax burden on the taxpayers for a cost-effective and efficient government. Uh, that's really the primary drive of that. Um, I'm not really so sure how one administration can guarantee what another will do. But I've got faith in the people who the individuals of Vernon elect to these positions. And it's my belief and my hope that they will act in the best interest of the taxpayer. Uh, other than that, I'm not really so sure how I can make any other guarantee. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I have um, Matthew Conway. Mr. Conway? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, thank you for, for uh, putting this out there to giving some, some broad information on this to us. I appreciate it. Um, my, my questions are, are around um, just really, um, Mr. Pitzker, with the, with the revenue projections, I mean, you're based, is it based on a 52 week year? I'm, those numbers are because I would assume that this is gonna be something that's seasonal. Um, I, I mean, thinking maybe three or four months a year of this not being really viable or, or, or get generating enough of, the, of the, the rateables that we'd be expecting. And also, too, um, not to be a Debbie Downer on it, but I mean, how does this not hurt Mountain Creek? I mean, how does this not cannibalize on Mountain Creek um, in regards to offering the same type of amenities? And, and, you know, their restaurants and, and all of that, too, which is something that the town, that's very important to this town. That's really my question. Mayor, may I answer those questions? Please. 
Okay. Um, Matthew, thank you very much for the questions and you're not being a Debbie Downer. We have to answer the tough questions. Uh, what I did do is I took an, I took an average uh, because there will be weeks where you'll see many more people show. And like, for instance, I took six visitors. Uh, if you talk to the hotels in this area, it's significantly higher. So I took a low number and then I averaged it out. So yes, you could say in December, there's nobody on a bike track or there's nobody hiking. But there is opportunities there to say during the summer, you may see more like uh, 100, 150 people in a week. And as we've seen on the trails over the years, uh, especially this COVID year, the trails were filled almost every day of the week with people and with these new opportunities to work from home, that's why. Um, your second question regarding uh, pump track taking business away from Mountain Creek. Uh, this is a different type of trail. Uh, this is for, you know, a pump track has uh, different features where the mountain biking is a bit more extensive. So it's actually, I think, works hand in hand with uh, Mountain Creek. And that's something we should actually discuss more with Joe Hessian. So you bring up a good point and I will have a dialogue with him. Thank you. Uh, let, let me let me just add as it relates to the activity around the pump track and and, uh, and Corey I think you can add to this simply because our pump track is going to be paid these pump tracks if, if the uh, experience over at Fort Jervis is an example they're used year-round and and we can just look at it at Maple Grange Park or I know my wife is a little extreme but she walks every single day in all kinds of weather and there are quite a few people who do this uh, I, I I think that also the experience that they've had at Snow, Vermont, at Snow, Vermont, and many of the other places. That was one of these resort areas, I can't even remember exactly which one it is, but it's a very famous one where they uh, actually put in the trail uh, uh, to, to try to uh, attract business just for the snow area. And now they've got people who literally come there just to walk the trail and to buy in those little stores. So uh, we, we think that this is going to be kind of a year-round attraction. And the last thing I want to say is that under my administration, we will do nothing to hurt Mountain Creek. I can tell you that. You don't, you don't kill a goose that lays the golden egg. Mountain Creek is, is an excellent uh, uh, civic servant. Uh, they pay their taxes, not only in full, but ahead of time and everything else. And, and I... I my best guess is that there's probably someone from Joe Hessian's office on here. I don't know that for sure, but if they is and they want to make a comment about this, and I know that uh, we 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 review portions of this plan and this trail with them, so uh, uh, we are not going to be duplicating what they do. Uh, in fact, one of the things that Joe Hessian has said to me is that if we get that trail up to the pump track area, he would be willing. Mount Creek would be willing to help us and invest to make sure it goes all the way down. It goes all the way down to Mount Creek because they see that as a driver of consumers for them. And, and Mayor, Mayor, this is Corey Stoner. If I can add, but we we did meet with uh, Representative Mount Creek, and they're very. They seem very positive because I think they thought it supplemented. Uh, whatever they they uh, they're doing at their facility it's a different amenity than what they provide and i think it will help supplement what the, their facility and the, the um uh, uh you know during the during the uh, years of, you know they do have mountain biking they have the, uh, the other events and i think the you know uh, if this is constructed uh, they seem to be very positive with it it'll help them and not uh, negate what they're trying to do with their facility Marcy? Yes. I'm sorry. I, I take pictures of the comments, so I remember them. For okay. Me. All right. Um, I have uh, Mr. Dan Krause. Mr. Krause? Good evening, everybody. Hello. Dan Krause here in Vernon. Uh, first and foremost, I'm very excited about this proposed uh, plan, the beautification and the improved utilization of the town center uh, looks and sounds amazing. Uh, I like the modular design of this project. Uh, I thought Jessica's town center conceptual presentation along with Corey's um, outlined a strong vision for our community. 
this is something that I think that uh, our community should be very proud of and showcase openly, uh, you know, internally and externally to investors. I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity. Uh, just and again, in that short presentation, my mind was thinking around, wow, what really could be here? And it could be anything. Um, with that said, um, I thought that uh, Mr. Fisker did a great job talking about some of the benefits. One thing I'd like to see is a little bit more transparency and growth on uh, the properties that are currently uh, for sale and or available uh, throughout that town center area. Uh, I think it would be a good decision for the township uh, to highlight those properties, uh, almost make a map and provide details around the potential uses uh, of those uh, properties. Um, really kind of, you know, put that out there in advance in conjunction with the uh, town center uh, conceptual plans. Uh, some of the benefits here, uh, additionally, is I, I truly believe that this helps increase home values, uh, family retention, and growth. Uh, my neighborhood that I live here in Vernon, uh, it is becoming more and more populated with children, which is fantastic. You know, I, I moved back here uh, almost 11 years ago or so. Uh, there were no children on my street. Now there's children everywhere. My son is five. And uh, he's very fortunate to have a lot of great close friends that continue to grow and populate our neighborhoods here. So this is a great amenity and, and great vision for this township. Uh, vastly different from when I grew up here and uh, living in Highland Lakes, um, now being over 40 years old. So a lot of changes. Uh, this is a very positive project. And I also think that it promotes both physical and mental health, especially in this day and age with COVID. Uh, you see a lot of folks that maybe uh, don't have the, the motivation to get outside. Uh, this is some, a catalyst that may, may promote some additional, uh, you know, exposure to be outside and, and getting involved with the community. Uh, also a great realtor resource. Uh, anybody looking to buy and or sell, uh, I would imagine every realtor having this conceptual plan in their portfolio, handing it out, uh, promoting it on their websites. And this is a huge attraction. If you're selling, you, you, as a seller, you would say, this is why you want to live here. If you're buying, you want to know about that. I mean, I just, whether you have kids or not, whether you're an individual like the outdoors, what an amazing um, promotional uh, packet that could be made out of that. Uh, and then kind of like lastly is again, just the economic strength for both new and current business. Uh, those conceptual plans and just how holistically this all ties together in that area. I, I, I can't see how, um, how everybody wouldn't benefit from this. This is so super positive. Uh, I think the community, the good chance for the community to come together and make some, some sweeping changes uh, that, that I think a lot of us have been expecting. And it's, it's, I think it's right here. So thank you all for all of your hard work. I, I'm, I'm just thrilled um, by this vision. So thank you. Thank you, Dan. Um, I have um, Sharon Finch. A Miss Fitch. Yeah, it's uh, last name is Fitch, F I T C H. Yes. And I've been here uh, in Vernon with Mr. Burrell for many years. Um, how do we regulate the usage of the track? Do we sell tickets so you don't get 60 people bombing around this track at the same time? How do you regulate? or how do other tracks regulate their usage? You sell tickets like Mountain Creek? Uh, we wouldn't be selling tickets to this. You ask a very good question though. Uh, Port Jervis, uh, I, I don't think that, I know Port Jervis does not sell tickets and the other near track is uh, uh, over in West Milford and they do not. They have a dirt track but they can't use it all that often. But the interesting thing is that Port Jervis build their track built their track primarily for recreational purposes. Not in that town center, but just as another recreational amenity. They never had any idea that it was gonna get as big as it did, that they were gonna have as many visitors. They've got so many visitors now until they're considering fencing it off somehow uh, and, uh, and, and, and at least not charging, but well, at least giving residents first choice. 
I uh, Mr. Krause, who just uh, who 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 just spoke, I know he told me that he often takes his son over there. So um, I guess to answer your question, um, um, we hope we have a lot of people to come and we'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, there are no specific plans in terms of uh, 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 how we're gonna ensure that we limit the number of people. But Chuck and I have already have, have talked about this. Uh, it's gotta be managed somehow. We're gonna to have to control it. We're gonna get it built, but I will promise you this, uh, uh, as we move forward with getting it built and getting things done, we will be revealing to the public uh, how we're going to manage it so it can be very cost effective and efficient. And so it can be something that people wanna to come to and not saying, I don't wanna to come to because it's too bad it's not well managed. Okay. And secondly, I'm glad to see the town center uh, or the track starts behind a municipal building where there's a possibility of an amphitheater being built. Uh, my wife and I attended a choral thing for the high school up at Glen Meadow a few weeks ago, and the venues around here are ideal for some sort of amphitheater on the side of a hill. Um, so I'm glad to see that's also in that proposal. You know, the high school, uh, they have what they call jazz at the tracks, I guess it is. Uh, uh, and and, and they, 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 they like that venue, but they would love to be able to have something like that. Tony, you were going to say something? I think it's jazz at the flats. Jazz at the flats. Okay, yeah. And they play, they play right there at the flats. See, it's not a, that's, that's a nice venue because we used to have a, the town fairs and things at the flats, and there's a lot of room there for people to run around and everything. So that might be an area also to develop a little bit more. There, think, there's no doubt that that amphitheater is going to be a tremendous asset to to people, uh, uh, and 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 putting it where we are putting it just makes so much sense because we got this built-in parking area right here uh, in, in the town center. So. Uh, we've got we've got a lot of plans of things we want to do. We think the plans are sensible, and we we think it it will drive potential customers to this area, and we think those potential customers will drive additional businesses. Okay, thank you guys. It was a great presentation. Sorry. There we go. Uh, Marcy, you were on mute and I couldn't yes, hear the two. I was. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Um, my name's Gene Arnold and uh, I've uh, spent my entire life here in Vernon. I've got uh, some great memories and uh, this is where I decided to raise my family. Uh, my family and Mayor Burrell's family, we have a very close relationship and I'm just very proud to see what has been put together. This is something that the town needs desperately. Um, I'm just, I'm seeing a future that we need here. And I think it's beautiful. There was a lot of work put into this and, um, I'm just very proud as I just want to let you know, I don't have a question just as a person that lives here with a family. This is something that, uh, we really need. And you did a wonderful job. And, uh, as a mountain, mountain biker and a mountain biker that spends a lot of time in mountain Creek, this only helps see what this opens up now is everything a mountain biker could want. We can do downhill, we can do pump track, we can take our kids and our family around the trails. We can also go to Weyweyanda and do cross country. People will come here and spend long weekends because you can now hit all the different, I'm gonna say cool stuff as a mountain biker, that's, that's what we call it, all the cool stuff as a biker. So now you've got people staying here for the restaurants, you've got people staying here, which where are they gonna stay? Mountain Creek. So I can completely see, and again, huge lover of Mountain Creek here, season pass for years. This is something that's going to certainly help them because now you come up here for the weekend and you do all kinds of mountain bike and riding. So this is just wonderful. And I just, again, um, as someone that's, you know, decided to raise their family here, this was very well thought out. And I just want to let you know that I appreciate all the work that was done and I'm very excited to see the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gene. I, I don't see any other hands.
I see no okay. hands uh, up there. Okay. Uh, would, would any of the council members like to make any comment? The only thing I would like to say is my, my uh, I can't say enough what the good job that our professional has done, uh, Andrew, with the presentation, uh, the work that the administration has done to see this to come to fruition is just good to see happening. That's it. Thanks, John. And thanks for your support. I agree with John. Uh, when I first saw this, when Corey and uh, Jessica presented to us a while back, I just thought we had to show it to the public to show um, all the work that has been done by the team and Danelle and you, Howard. Um, just a great job. And uh, yeah, I, I, for 580 a year, I, I can't see not doing it. Thank you. I mean, I echo everyone else's comments. I just want to say this. I mean, a tremendous amount of work went into this. We didn't take any of this lightly. If anyone thinks we went into this blind, we did not. You know, a lot of research went into this and, you know, we did a, a lot of number crunching and we want to do what's best for the community. So I thank everyone who was involved in this and I'm glad we had the opportunity to present it to the public this evening. Andy. I just want to say thank you for you know, giving me the time to do this. You know, we did put a lot, in the, it was a team effort. Um, I presented it, but there's a lot of information. And I know there are people who are going to challenge the information and that's okay. Use your own figures. Um, if you think the figures are too high, you know, adjust them down. But at the same time, this is a way and a business plan to move town center forward and flatten the rates and bring taxes and develop town center. I counted 14 properties. There's many more than that, but that is just Omega, Theta, and Church Street. Uh, I think it's important that we work together. And I know there are people who are saying, oh, maybe the rates that the estimates they gave you are too high. I'm okay with that. That gives us an opportunity to have a dialogue. And that's what I look forward to. So with that, I just uh, hope that you know, we have good dialogue, we have a plan, uh, and let's work towards uh, making it better together. So thank you. Well, I, I'd like to end by, by just saying to the public that uh, <clears throat> it, it, it's, it's not that all of us, the mayor and the council agree on everything, but we believe that we are a team. Uh, and we're all working in the best interest of this town. And if we put our egos behind each other, the, the, the fights, the disagreements we have are on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And we don't try to come forward and jam something down any member's throat. Uh, if it's something that we can't agree on, we work out until we can kind of get agreement on it. And I, I think that this is what makes the, the real big difference in this town. Uh, you know, at one time, reporters would come to our council meetings and other events to see who was gonna attack who. You know, we were the front page news for that, rather than reporting on the things that we were trying to do with this council and with this mayor, with this team, that has not been the case. And I think that this presentation tonight is, is a result of that kind of action. I'd like to thank uh, all of the members of the public who attended. I thank Marcy, when I looked at it, we had what, 40, what, 50 we had? Did you, uh, we, you, had we had about um, 37, um, uh, uh, public. Um, okay, not system. counting us. It yeah. was actually about 48 at one point, Marcy. So we had a good, we had a good turnout. We had almost yeah. 50 at one point. I think. We had a very good turnout. Yeah. I'm so pleased. With our 11. So, you know, our 11 is included in the number, but we, we did have a good turnout. Yeah. You know, if our, 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 someone, someone said, if you don't do something for your town, who's going to do it? I think Andy said that. And uh, I think if we don't provide people good information and plans in terms of what we are doing, they're going to get their information from the internet or Facebook or some other place, which not as accurate, is not as credible. So I'm glad we did it. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Chuck, is there anything that you'd like to say? Because you're not a council person, but you work so doggone hard and, 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 and <laughs> solve a lot of these problems for us. Uh, thank you for that compliment, but no, I have nothing to add. Thank you. What about any of our professionals? 
Donnell? No, I don't, I don't have any okay. comments. Thank you. With that, guys, thank you Corey. so very much. Corey? Good night and good luck. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.